Well, then, oh, what? No, no, it's private. Oh, Jesus. Okay, Is I've it set. Hang on. Oh, public, public. Nice. Done. Oh, <laughs> Did you sit on public? Yep, it should be. The the link you you put no don't work. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. No no works. Perfect. Yeah, I said it's private. I've said it's public now. Is it public now? Oh, I don't. It looks like they can't see my Photoshop. We'll eventually be able to start streaming. <laughs> like the, on OBS it says it's streaming my Photoshop, so why isn't it on YouTube? Oh, it is now. Great. Huzzah. Huzzah, guys. Hello. Oh, we're live. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, it's still saying it's private, but I guess people are here, so it's not anymore. That yeah, is it doesn't great. Look like it. Okay, brilliant, we've got it. Great, it works. Yeah, guys, sorry for that. You know, 2D artists are a bit of tech noobs. <laughs> <laughs> we actually don't know what we're doing. Uh, do you mind streaming for me on the Discord? Yes, I forgot about that. Thank you. Uh, no worries. There we go. Okay, sure work now. All right, so let's start. Thanks for the patience, folks. Yes, I hope you all are doing well today. So, today we are going to work, as you can see, on the Lorian Sword Company, and we are going to share some stuff and where we are at with Lorian right now, Love Lorian. And so the sword company is a tier one unit, uh, wears leather armor and is equipped with a sword and a small leaf leaf shaped shield. So it's it's gonna be your main line infantry basically. Uh, did El did LG say anything about showing the previews, or did you want to wait till he? Yeah, I, I was. Joins uh, up? I, I wanted to wait as soon as he like. Okay. We were thinking of just showing you all the previews to make sure you're all up to date with all the amazing Elven stuff that's been going on behind the scenes. Yeah, so this is basically the... Uh, no, I, I still have the other one, like the um, the Wardens of the Fences, but this is, is theoretically the last concept for Lothlorien. Very last concept. So they just need to be worked on in 3D. Sad times. <laughs> Damn. Okay. So starting with the base as usual. Getting the proportions right. Trying to get the proportions right. <laughs> Far from a professional artist, so doing my best, so... Flipping the canvas is always a good idea to see the mistakes you've made, or as Bob Ross would say, the happy accidents, right? <laughs> Indeed. Did I tell you how to set custom keybinds? No. Because I flip, I flip the keyboard a lot. I mean, okay, I'll, I'll tell you afterwards. Yeah. It's this horrible. Yeah, um, come on, come on! It's Control Alt Shift A, and that brings up this uh, big menu of all different. Keybinds and you can set them custom. Okay, but I do that all the time, so it's worth it's worth doing. It's it's weird that they didn't include that by default. But. Yeah, indeed, <laughs> it should be like a a, f a primary function when you like install a Photoshop. Like, do you want mm -hmm. to set keybinds? Okay. Um. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, and yeah, well, unfortunately we did lose all the likes we accumulated throughout the day. Aye. Numbers. That's all right. Not important. 
<laughs> for goodness sake, forget about energy show now. <laughs> Um, Ziggs 971 Edred, are you using a drawing t a drawing pad or a tablet? I'm using, I don't know, are you using a, a screen tablet? Yes. Go here for Christmas. <laughs> I think it's be patient with the previews. Oh, it's nothing you, you've, you've seen them all. I mean, it's stuff that's been in our yeah. previous channel. I mean, uh, I have concepts that people didn't see. So I guess that's a oh. that's a cool part, uh, like yeah. the Twilight Garden and all of that stuff. Oh, I didn't know they'd been done. Uh, they basically are there. They just aren't preview ready, you know, like promotional. Ah, uh, okay. Promotional part, because the base and the colors are basically established. Lovely. All right. So set the opacity to fifty, maybe lower. So you can see what I'm doing. And I'll start doing the concept. So I have references. Damn. Um, okay. In the movie, there is this... We get a quick shot at what a warden uh, of Florian looks like. And he wears leather armor. It's a very weird and basic leather armor, but I think it still looks very cool. So he still wears the standard Lorian cloaks. In grey, he even wears um, blue. So yeah, they do wear blue. Enzo, hello Enzo Cormier. Um Assassin Goldie, needn't worry, I'll log in on my alts and like, number one on trending in battle. <laughs> Very nice. That is definitely the spirit. Uh, Xavier, is this tier one? Hello, Xavier. Yes, it is. It is a tier one unit. Basically, your mainline infantry next to the uh, sentinels, the Lorian, the Florian sentries or sentinels, and uh, the outriders, which are cavalry mounted archers. Yes. Indeed. I mean, you as Lothlorien again, like uh, Linden and Imladris, you don't get mainline swordsmen you get your double-handed you know your double-handed maniacs who wave around their big swords <laughs> uh, which means they're shocked so that you don't have that that security of, of a main line like gondor so you'll be relying on your tier two sword sword and shield units and your tier one even maybe so this these guys are the tier one yes these guys are the tier one i mean they're elves so they're still going to be very well trained Oh, for sure. Elven army's always scary to... Think. Yeah. <laughs> always imagined them a bit like, you know, Romans. Like, being very silent on the battlefield. Not like, you know, war chants and all that stuff. Mm. Even well, they, though... They could sing. Yeah. They could be singing their <laughs> merry songs. <laughs> Elves singing. Mm. Zahn, basic doesn't mean bad. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with elves, like we were yeah. saying. Doing simple concepts is always very fun to do. So yeah, also, very... they're, they're fun because they're quick as well. That, yeah. Like, there's, with concepts that are really detailed, they are very cool to look at, but after a while you get quite bored of them. Or I do anyway. Yes, I do too. And having, yeah, having something that you can bang out in maybe, you know, one evening or a day, that is oh, it's good fun. Keeps you going too, you know? Yeah, good yeah, motivation. for sure. Daka boy, hello. And AA Oezka, when is the next update? Well, soon with a trademark is our, our generic response. <laughs> soon to you. Yeah. To be honest, uh, you know, us developers don't know either, to be honest. So we, we only really know, you know, just before it's about to go out. So Yeah. You know, it's a freelance um, stuff. So can't really set the release date. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And if we set a release date, you know, and we accidentally miss it, or we, we aren't able to meet it, then people are going to be disappointed. So, exactly, it's best just not to say anything at all. Uh, Sam Wilson, dude, my friends and I are super Lord of the Rings nerds, and can I just say you guys are making something great here? 
really high quality work, better than a lot of big name companies. <laughs> Thanks, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, the the fact that it's a voluntary, you know, passion project means yeah. There's no budget constraints. There's no time limits. Um, it's yeah. While you may not have that sort of like publicity and that that drive behind you, you still yeah. The the quality is admittedly much yeah. better. Still great fun. Mm. Mm, and uh, God, you learn a lot. <laughs> Oh, oh, for sure. Yeah. You start, you join the team, and you have a level, okay, because you get accepted eventually. And Rise of Mortar likes to have very ta talented and um, capable people. And then, uh, well, you're amongst those people, and you eventually get better at what you're doing, and very fast, actually. For sure. People like Frusty, when yeah. you join. Or Execution. That. Yeah, yeah. Or you. Yeah, I didn't. I I didn't even know how to use Photoshop when I joined. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, nor did I. Actually, I sort of learned. I learned for Rise of Mordor, actually. Oh. So man's gonna hold his sword. So no need to do the hand like that. So, I looked up some references. I always like to think as elves like more, um, Oriental kind of people so I like to look at Japanese references you know like um, Japanese culture and Chinese culture they have got that look about them haven't they those like I mean the curved swords and like yeah I mean and the, the sort of gowns and things yeah and they... the tunic and long cloaks too it kind of feels like it. it's not necessarily Japanese inspired mm -hmm. but it feels like it so when you look at Japanese warriors for example they have like you know, those details like a knife, mm. uh, for example, that I actually am going to draw now because it's very interesting. So they have those details like a knife they would like put on their belt on a v in a very specific manner. So you have, I think they fixed it like that. So the knife is horizontally. You have it come out here and it's just fix like that with sort of. Oh, nice. Stuff like this. I mean, yeah, elves are. It's quite hard to pinpoint where they were inspired from, to be honest. Which but is think, great. Yeah. Which means. Oh, absolutely. Which That's means a, it's well done work. It's a well designed, yeah. yeah. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that like factions like Rohan are badly designed. <laughs> If the if the inspiration is clear, because you can see Rohan, they look absolutely fantastic yeah. and unique, even though they are clearly inspired by Anglo-Saxon and Vikings. Vikings on horses, basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Assassin Goldie, whenever I try draw on Photoshop, you can get a stickman at best. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> starts somewhere. <laughs> Everyone starts with a stickman. Oh. And I mean, you know, Edward started with a stick man under this concept. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> the foundation of this concept. Is exactly. It's all about refining practice and just not giving up, I think, is the most important thing. Yeah. You can't really fail at art, really. You can't. Yeah, exactly. Because... Especially modern art. I yeah. mean, you could, you could, like, you could not quite be as good as, as, other artists when it comes to like realism yeah. but then you could just say it's modern art <laughs> and and people aren't even allowed to argue with you well, anything is modern art <laughs> art attack that's uh yeah exactly i'm everyone talking about his strats <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no i despise all that i think art should have you should be able to see effort in art yeah me too yeah um, I, I think it's not that i don't like yeah it's not that i don't like modern art because there's some really cool stuff out there. yeah exactly there there is some great stuff like i saw i remember in luxembourg there was an exposition about uh, modern modern art uh, how you call that 
hopes of Luxembourg, you know, like new artists or young artists. Mm, mm, there yeah, was yeah. a great, great sculpture uh, made entirely out of what you call it, grass. Like you had, oh, wow. uh, you had, yeah, yeah, you had mud and grass. And it was a whole you, a whole body, and it was absolutely fantastic. But there was no, it it wasn't figurative, you know, like you couldn't recognize someone. It was yeah. just like, yeah. It was great. Nice example. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Xavier saying, I mean, you guys are going for the aesthetic of the movies. So, yeah, a more oriental look is the way to go. Indeed. Uh, Zahn saying, I mean, it looks like... I mean, if it looks good and makes logic to a degree, I like it. Sometimes the rule of cool overwrites logic. Yeah. Uh, in such kind of... Ser series that is about fantasy. Yeah, yeah, we agree there. You can see the Galadrian uh, helmets. Oh, don't don't get me started on them. Because <laughs> they do look cool, but you know, logically, they do not. They're, they're probably one of the worst designs, actually, out of all of the films. Mm. Yeah, because when you look at the Gondorian soldier, he does have chainmail and all. You know, fully protect yeah, protective yeah. armor. I mean, so I think if he had chainmail around the neck um, or, a, or a gorget coming up, mm. I think that would be quite a, a decent armor, to be honest. I think that's what I'd choose if I had to go into battle. Out of all the things we see in the films. Uh, Xavier saying, to be honest, elf seems like a mix of lots of things, curved swords and are another thing for elves in the books. Both they are iconic because of the movies. Yes, indeed. The Xavier is one of our lore masters in our lore channel, which of course you can find on our Discord, uh, which we haven't plugged this stream. Haven't so we? if of course oh, yeah, you are <laughs> new around here, do consider... Checking out our Discord, because that's where everything happens. That's our center hub. Previews, announcements. Discuss with the community. Exactly, exactly. All right, so. This is quite nice. Well, I'm obviously going to go with um, curved swords, though, <laughs> because every Lorian elf has a curved curved sword. So, gotta oh, follow indeed. the main aesthetic. But I'm going to do the sword design later. That's us and Goldie. This is real art. Oh, yeah, this is real art. Modern art makes me froth at the mouth. I refuse to accept that paint splatter on a canvas is art. Me in year one was true art by that logic. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's there's some really shocking stuff out there. I mean, it's shocking in the fact that they've, you know, they've passed it off as art and used their name as a as the as you know yeah. to sell it rather than it looking good. So. And yeah, Zachaboy, Damon, Hurst, Pepe, Loft. Yeah, indeed. All right. So the belt buckle, I forgot that. I think they have the symbol more. Cause there was like the complicated one for the tier three, and you designed a very simple, very simple belt buckle for the lower tiers, which I quite liked. Oh, I think yeah, I think that was actually because I had bad reference. I don't, I don't necessarily think tier one should be simple though. I mean, yeah, yeah. If you think that's that's the right thing to use, then then go for it. Um, but I, I see no because they're elves, so I, I see no issue with using complex belts and 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 stuff like that. I, it's yeah. up to you though. Well, I do that because tier two has it. So ah, okay, okay. 
in tier two. Yeah, I'm not having my way with my graphic tablet right now. There are days where drawing feels better than other. <laughs> oh, I agree. Sometimes I get weird bugs on mine that just ruin everything. <laughs> I have a teacher who always says, um, if you don't feel it, don't do it. But then you're in art school and you have to do it. So you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. Small size. There we go. Ooh. Right, assassin, Goldie, true hero. I've liked with as many alts as I can remember the passwords for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Appreciate that, my friend. Uh, track Van Karstein. Hello, everybody. Uh, hello, Rise of Mordor. Thanks for your work once again. You are o the only mod that made me stop asking Creative Assembly to create a Lord of the Rings Total War. Because <laughs> you made a better one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. And the Discord link is pinned in the chat, by the way, folks. Join the Discord. It's great. And uh, as Assassin said, the Tate Modern which is a museum in London, has some prime examples of modern art. Some of it's all right, but lots is just no. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm not sure I can pronounce that name, but L Lucas asking, I respect all your guys' work into this mod. I just wanted to say thanks. Well, we to you, I say, I mean, to you, I say thank you as well. Yeah. Thank you for the support. Because we wouldn't be here. Yeah, we are getting a exactly. lot of support. We wouldn't be here without your support. So you have just, a, just as large a role to play as us developers. And don't forget, if you guys feel like you could help us, Check the recruitment section in our Discord. Mm. You'll find all that is needed to join the team if you have skills that can be useful. And remember, there's an intern role. So if you are a familiar, but you want to improve and you want to, you know, really get that that energy. You've got the energy, but you want to improve your skills. Then you know, consider applying as an intern. You'll get uh, one of us. One of our. our experienced developers to guide you I mean if I were you guys I would do it because it's basically free class <laughs> you know, people yeah, talking about indeed. Skillshare and all of that stuff well you got your free Skillshare right here it's I think I think it's better than Skillshare to be honest yeah because you get that one-to-one -one yeah tuition and they can you know, give you feedback on your work yeah as opposed to a generalized video thing so and, I mean, if we get an intern, if we get to, like, teach an intern, we learn a lot, too. That's yeah, how indeed. Works. That's how teaching works. I learned a lot while teaching to Theodore, and now he's improved greatly. At the he's, point really, he's got really good, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, development team when, I guess. When is he going to become a dev? No, I... Uh, question. All right. Line art's done. Well, that's not really line art. That's more the sketch. This is going to be line art. So. This is gonna be low opacity. Tom Alexander. How big will the Lothlorien roster be? Uh, Trello link is in the description below. If you want to have a look at all the rosters. Uh, as Enzo's pointed out to you. That's yeah. That's the best place to look for all concept art. You know, unit cards, rosters, factions. You'll find all your answers there. Also, where the factions are at and all. 
No, oh, indeed, indeed. Um, Constantinos, Tual, probably at least a couple of units per tier. Oh, in regard to Lothurin, yes, they've got three or four units per tier. Uh, same with most factions. Anduin Vale has a lot, I just realized. Did yeah, you... I know. I think actually, it's, I think it's main, yeah, sorry, mainly the elven factions that have smaller rosters yeah. like Woodland Realm, um, things like Condor, Harad, have massive, you know, massive tiers, yeah. massive amount of units. Uh, Jack von Karstein, my only skills are on eating. Well, if we ever need a hungry hobbit on a team, we will ask you. H H hungry hobbit. <laughs> it's sad. I fear that day will never come. <laughs> Rise of Mordor's new videos. Um, trying food for uh, from different <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Oscar, uh, Oscar Gustafsson. Every time during these live streams, I bite my tongue and not ask, when will it be finished? Like an excited child. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, updates. We ourselves don't know when the update's coming out because, you know, um, it's it's all the, the balancing folks doing their, their individual scheming. So I, I don't know. Um, we only really find out a few days before. So, I mean, we can't tell you if we don't know. Uh, <clears throat> Assassin's saying, yeah, 14 units in total planned for Lothorian. So it's a fairly small roster, like like the Woodland Realm. It's a fairly small roster. Woodland Realm has thirteen. Oh, really? Which I, I think it must be one of the smallest. For Lothlorien, I think Imladris also has like very few units. That's true. That. Although nothing will match. Poor Bree with only three or four units, <laughs> but which makes me very sad. They aren't going to be a playable faction. Right? No, no, unfortunately <laughs> not. I remember. But I'll that. still have good fun designing them. Yeah, I always remember that day with the when you just said like no Arnor and then Sag. <laughs> 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 People sad. Yeah. It was very, very funny. Well, I mean, Aldous, Aldous finished modeling Hamul. Oh. Which basically means that Arnor is on the table now, which I'm very excited for. Arnor is back on the menu, boys. <laughs> Arnor is back on the menu, boys. Yes. Total War Battles 2. Keep up the good work, guys. Thank you very much. And Haze of the Reach, hello. And Xavier saying, I love that there's a tier two two-handed axeman for the Woodland Realm. Yeah, it fits with the law, the law accurate. Um, the book stuff, which I believe says the Woodland Realm used axes, or the Sindar used axes. Yes, uh, the Sylvan. I think. Sylvan, yes. that's the one. The Sylvan. So Melvin many names. Is. I mean, count me in sense. from the cup of tea. Asking, count me in for the hungry hobbits part. I feel we'll get many applicants for that. Zachary boy saying, "I'd hate to get asked the same question every day." I feel your pain. Oh, well, it's mainly the poor moderators, moderators that have to face the brunt of the. When's the next, yeah. you know, update? When's the campaign coming up? We don't have to care about it. <laughs> 
And so our brave moderators are to thank for that. Uh, Modest Eagle, hello. Are there any new units coming to Rune in the future? Yes, to you I say check out the Trello board in the description. You'll be able to see all the planned and current faction rosters. And yes, of course, Rune it still is due lots and lots of love, and Ulta is working hard on them. Yes, so. and they do look gorgeous already. So. Oh, indeed. Uh, Drac asking, Rise of Mordor, on previous streams, you said you can't go much on fantasy units like Fell Beasts or Balrogs, because the game engine doesn't allow it. Uh, is the most fantasy entity we're going to see a troll? Um, so no, we're gonna we're currently working on trolls, yes. Uh, and after trolls, we plan on doing wargs. Yes. And after wargs, we're doing Muma kill. But unfortunately, I think as far as I know, we are not doing any flying units, uh, just because the, the the game engine can't handle that. Uh, it's it's not designed to be doing that. I mean, I know that Warhammer does allow that. Yeah, uh, we can only. Works. Yeah, indeed, we it can only. Works very well in Warhammer. I like it a lot. I we're only so. able to mod uh, Warhammer mods for Warhammer. Otherwise, it's illegal. So we can't use Warhammer. Um, and Balrog, as far as I know, is not going to be a thing either. Although that would be possible, but I don't think it'll be a thing. Assassin saying 16 for the Wooden Realm. I counted custom generals and stuff for the roster. Um, I'm not quite sure you are right there. So I've done all the unit cards for them. <laughs> Although, watch me be wrong. I mean, including generals, yes, but... Franduil will get his individual Elven King's Riders... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 units plus Thranduil's Elven King Riders makes it 13. So there. But of course, uh, yeah, Legolas as well will be a thing. Yes. I'm very excited for the Rangers for Aragorn. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, and uh, yes, Durin has just pointed out spiders are going to be a thing, yes, as well. Oh, yeah, indeed. Although I got an absurd, saw an absurd su suggestion of spider riders, which I don't think. Well, sorry, I, I shouldn't say absurd. That's that's not that's not very professional of me. Um, a unique suggestion of spider riders. Which I think is doable. Probably, yeah. I, I just don't think it's... <laughs> yeah. The spiders weren't particularly... Sounds more Warhammer to me. Mm. I know they, they're in, they appear in Battle for Middle-Earth 2, spider-riding goblins, but I, again, I don't think that's... It's like goat riders, not convinced. Yeah. Uh, Zach Boy, do you use any ideas and units from Third Age Reforged? Um, I don't follow Third Age Reforged um, very much at all. No, we don't. But, uh, uh, I used to though, so I, I, you know, carry ideas across sometimes. Yeah, inspiration, but I never really look at their unit units and say, "Oh, this would be a good idea." <laughs> yeah, indeed. Unfortunately, the graphic limitations of Medieval yes. Two indeed. mean you can't. You know, you can't pack a huge deal of detail on, onto the unit like we can do with Rise of Mordor. And that always just put me off a little bit. Although I quite like... I don't know why there's a, char a charm to how bulky they are. Like, the models in Thinage. Yeah. And yeah, they look like 
very wide somehow. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, they are funny. I, I think it's quite cool. I like it. It's yeah. quite cartoony, actually. It's, yeah, exactly. It's its own sort of style. So, uh, yeah. And our very own Victimized was part of the original Third Age team. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. And he, he modeled, like, the... I know for a fact he modeled the Mordor Urux from Third Age. He's going to have the the design I made for the gloves. Oh, very nice. Which are the no, that's, longer, that's really fitting, actually. Longer version. Um, Jurin saying, no, all units are planned from book, movies, and the team. No other inspiration. Well, yes, the, the rosters are, pla are built around the, the book, uh, and the visuals are based around the films. But where there isn't any visuals from the films, like, let's say, you know, Gondor fiefdom units or, um, or Arnor units or, or Andrew and Vale units, we use our own inspiration. And, you know, I'm always on the hunt for looking for inspiration. But I'll never copy. I'll always only ever be inspired by it. Yeah. I won't directly copy because that's not very good practice. Um, Xavier saying tier 3 for Gondor and Rune are really similar here in Reforge but that's because the movie is static yeah I'm not quite very contrary the movie is static but they look very different in the movie yeah uh uh, hang on. Aiden, what about the Balrog as an agent? I'm not <laughs> sure. I mean, Maestro is the guy to ask for that. I would be very impressed if you can recruit a Balrog to your service. Yeah. One of the most vicious demons of the old age, old, old world, is able to be recruited as an agent. Seems slightly bizarre. And make this giant creature act as an assassin. <laughs> Oh yeah, they won't see him coming. <laughs> well, I see something weird in the distance. Should we? <laughs> yeah. What's that? That heat? That. <laughs> Although it's such an absurd idea that maybe no one will even think about it. Yeah. It must be a heat wave. They wouldn't send the Balrog out like that. Next thing you know, Mel. Balrog is on your doorstep. Yeah, yeah. Modest Eagle, another question. Is the campaign going to be multiplayer supported? Uh, not in first release, as far as I know. Yeah, because you can play in multiplayer in Attila. In oh, you campaign. can't? Yeah, you can do okay. a multiplayer campaign in Attila, which is pretty cool. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. I don't know, yeah, I don't, I don't know if we will do that in first release. Um, you know, we might do, but I can't, I, I'm not a campaign guy, so I can't tell you. Enzo, Linden and Woodland Realm both have 13 planned units. Lothlorien has 12. Oh, okay. And Imladris has 17, the largest elven roster. Uh, I didn't include custom heroes with their bodyguard. Uh, already mentioned. Oh. Ah, right. Well, uh, there we go. So Lind uh, Lothlorien is actually one of the smallest rosters in the game. Yeah. I was thinking Imladris had one of the smallest. <laughs> that makes completely no sense, actually, because Imladris is arguably yeah. the smallest elven settlement, uh, you know, with only a few hundred elves there. Yeah. And then they can muster uh, 3,000 warriors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Lucas has asked the question. Will we be getting Goat Cav in the future? Unfortunately not, uh, Lucas. That is one thing we are not going to budge on. Dwarves like to fight on their own two feet. Yes. And of course it would create balancing hell, balancing mayhem. So give the dwarves, to make the dwarves good at everything, will just mean they are, you know, uh, too overpowered to face. 
So we need to think about balancing as well as, as law accuracy. Indeed, they already have the merchant calf to for the lack of cavalry, so to come Indeed. And the merchant cav in the current update are ridiculously strong for a tier two cavalry. So we're very glad to say that they will indeed be nerfed in the next update. Which fills me with joy. Is the amount of losses I've had from the bloody merchant cavalry. <laughs> yeah, casual saying, don't you hate when you get your wells poisoned by a balrog? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, bloody annoying, isn't it? On a wall, will Thranduil be on his elk, like the Hobbit movie, or just a regular horse? Well, you can already see in-game Thranduil's armour, and all he's missing is a custom head. So he will just be on a horse, I'm afraid. For now. You know, I, I don't know if the elks are particularly a, a lawbreak as such, but I don't know if we will use them. I do think it was uh, Elijah was talking about no um, fantasy, like no animal cavalry at all, except for horses and wargs. So ah, oh, okay, fair enough. Well, there you go. Not sure though. Still to be confirmed. I feel that if you were riding around on an elk would have been mentioned in the Hobbit. Yeah, indeed. Even though the Hobbit's quite a, like a children's book, that's quite a a big thing, isn't it? Yeah. So Xavier saying goats are never gonna be a thing, never, never, never. Exactly. Same with the weird ballista like thing. Oh yeah, the Yeah. The twirly whirlies. <laughs> Deary me. I mean that that ballista, the actual model of the ballista is going to be used as the dwarven ballista. But it's just going to shoot normal bolts. We we don't want to... I mean, I think it would be an absolute nightmare to try and get it to work anyway. How how on earth are you going to intercept an arrow volley with twirly things? Yeah. Uh, it would be ridiculous to make it practical in a game. I love how so, in the movies they made they made seem uh, they made tra Thran will seem like completely stupid <laughs> yeah, exactly. it was like yeah shoot sh lose a volley and then, and then they got wrecked and then he was like okay another one <laughs> <laughs> you're like yeah, exactly. don't you see it's not working I mean you've got a, a thousand of highly trained woodland archers and you're just thinking about shooting a volley just in the middle yeah. Well, what you could do is you could, you, you could just either make people shoot at different time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or you could tell to shoot at different angles, so some of them shoot high, some shoot low, and then you know. Yeah, the elves are surely disciplined enough to, to pass around orders like that very quickly. So, but. I always imagined the Battle of the Five Armies with the elves. You know, the elves being more like green uh, cloaked. Yeah, and yeah, that's true. Only rangers. I never imagined them having like a full-on army in full armor. Always thought. Yeah, I, re I know that in the book actually they were they were all clad in gr green as far as I can remember, and they were really lightly armored. Yeah, but they had like spearmen and things. Yeah, well, makes sense. Okay. So we do have our base. Let's do the face. Just gonna run to the toilet for a second. All right. <laughs> Aiden saying, Valrog agent to do big sabotages like it's attacks by himself. Yeah, I mean, if a Balrog wants to sabotage anything, he just need to walk. He just needs to walk on something. All will be good. Um. Um, in the Hobbit throne. <laughs> See, I was saying, in, in is the Hobbit trilogy, guys. Just don't think about logic and everything. It's is fine. Yes, indeed. Although they have quite cool designs, I reckon. Uh, although the elves look fantastic and the dwarves look very cool too. And all the cultures that they established, 
But yeah, logic isn't... Like, I mean, you got a troll serving as a ram. <laughs> Even though the gate's next to him. He's got to tell you something. <laughs> Casual bringing up a good point. Keep in mind, within the Hobbit trilogy, they also had a giant mountains have a fist fight. Yes, indeed. But it's fantasy. <laughs> good old excuse. So let's do an angry elf, I guess. There we go. Not just kidding. So, I feel like my brush is too thick. Here we go. Elves always have remarkably sharp cheekbones. So, didn't finish his gauntlets. I guess soon we'll be able to start in the colors, which is good news because colors are always fun. Xavier saying, sometimes it's hard to think that Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit were directed by the same guy. Yes, I agree. I fully, full on agree. It's very weird. Uh, is Mayron back? Indeed, indeed. Very nice. I mean, on that topic... Directed, I think it was more of a. I mean, they they kept it quite realistic. I know that sounds crazy for a fantasy movie, but it feels more real, more down to earth, maybe in Lord of the Rings. And then in the Hobbit, they sort of make this, they sort of make make things go way too overboard for the sake of being epic. Yes. No, I guess I guess it's that they were trying to be like they made Lord of the Rings epic, but that was always to serve the story. You know, like Legolas taking down a Moomba kill, and then that was part <laughs> of the, the competition, and that was all a a big joke and all that. That was that was great. That was really well executed. But then they try and do something crazy for the Hobbit, and it just feels like you know you're just throwing it in there to be. You know, like Legolas running up some bricks that are falling through the, through the air. Yeah. It just feels weird. I always do almond eyes for the elves. <laughs> and folks, we have a mission for you. We need you to, after the stream is finished, of course... Uh, go over to Pixelated Apollo's recent Rise of Mordor video and tell him to spam spam him with saying using the new logo. Use the new logo in your videos. Because he keeps using the old one and it's really, really bugging me. <laughs> All this work. <laughs> exactly. All you don't know how much pain those logos cause me. To. I had to make so many of them. In the end, they were a great success, but it's still loads of work, so... Mm, indeed. Back boy, hating on The Hobbit. We're, we are hating on The Hobbit a little bit. I, I mean, I, there are things about The Hobbit that I really like. Yeah. And well, I don't want to make it sound like I'm only hating on The Hobbit. Yeah. Although, um, although I was hating on The Hobbit, I actually enjoyed the movies. <laughs> yeah, so do yeah. I. They're, they're good fun. Yeah. They, they don't compare with Lord of the Rings. There's, there's no competition at all but I mean they are good fun I really the I mean the designs 
Really, really cool, like dwarven designs, elven designs. Yes. Uh, as you can see in the mod, they are excellent. They're some of the most beautiful looking units. Uh, and the music, Tauriel's theme, beautiful. Yes. Tauriel's theme is actually on my playlist. Really good. The Forest River is my favourite track. Casual saying, oh, you like the Hobbit trilogy? Name all the dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, go on. That's a good challenge. Um, I actually don't know all the names, I think. Oh, I think I could do uh, Um, Zach Boy saying, I don't love them, I just don't hate them. I think they did more good than bad, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I agree with you there. I agree. They're good fun. And I think the casting was excellent, as always. Yeah. The Lord of the Rings casting has been excellent. Yeah. I really like um, it. So I'm excited to see what happens with the with the TV show because they've they've cast a lot of theatre actors, um, which means they're not very experienced with film. But like, I often find that theatre actors are some of the best actors. People like Ian McKellen and yeah, indeed. So uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Ian McKellen alone is a, a legend. So indeed. John Noble, guy who plays Denethor, is a theatre actor. Yes. And he's a, he's one of my favourites as well. <laughs> he really does the the sad father <laughs> and <laughs> greedy lord very well. <laughs> Completely done dirty, of course, in the films. He was a, yeah. quite an epic dude in the in the books. Um, he actually uh, was not corrupted by Sauron. He was he sort of fought with him with the Palantir. Oh yeah, he did have um, um, epic yeah. Wi-Fi wi -fi battles with. Sauron. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, ultimately, he lost. And there's some debate amongst the chat about the Hobbit movies but yeah most people are agreeing that they are enjoyable things wrong with them but of course they are enjoyable uh, Oscar saying it really bugs me how the eagles are depicted as Gandalf's pets in the movies uh, yeah that's true I mean they are in the books it's not that they do anything different in the movies and the books. Um, and I know that Gandalf saved Gwaihir's life. Gwaihir was the the lord of the eagles. He saved his life, so Gwaihir was forever in his service, um, as far as I can remember. I don't remember that part. So, you know, they, they helped them out. It's not that they made them any more epic in the films. Durin saying, Thorin, Dwellin, Balin, Biffa, Bomba, Boffa, Philly, Killy, Oin, and Gloin. Who are you missing there? Um, Dori, Nori, Nori, you're missing. Yes. And that's it, isn't it? Yeah. After all these years, I finally have them all. <laughs> Matteo, they did some really they did some things really well and also some things really bad. Yeah, I think that's, that's the best way to describe it. <laughs> Denethor ruined tomatoes for me. 
Ah, sure. Ah. That scene. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, on the reference, the cloak, the blue cloak I'm drawing <coughs> is actually way longer, but I was thinking it would be absolutely horrible to fight with something like that. So I just made it a tad bit shorter. Oh, and also rigging. It yeah, might look it, weird if it's going all the way down <laughs> with rigging. Xavier saying Martin Fr nah, Martin Freeman fits Bilbo Baggins. I can admit that. Oh yeah, Bilbo was a very well cast character. I think. Yes, indeed. Um, who else was good? I liked Billy Connolly as Dane Dane Ironfoot. <laughs> yes. Um, Lauren Richard Armitage was great. Benedict Cumberbatch. You know, all the main characters were really well done. Yeah, S Smog is actually very impressive. Mm -hmm. I was kind of, of course, cool. Gollum. I mean, yeah. I mean, Bilbo and Gollum's riddles in the dark was probably the best scene of, of The Hobbit for me. It was really, that, that was outstanding. Yeah, well, you can't, you can't, you, you're never deceived by Andy Serkis, mm -hmm. is his name. Indeed. Dancing, I think what annoyed me the most is actually the giant earthworms. I guess I'm a bit whack. Plus that... Plus the main characters... The main dwarven cast kind of becomes less and less the focus at the time. Yeah, I they, guess so. They do sort of forget about the other dwarves. Mm. <laughs> They're just there. Yeah. The well, it's difficult, really. Uh, Fellowship was only nine people, and then one of them died, and then they split up. And nine people of different races so you have a lot yeah of yeah that's very easy to distinguish yeah. whereas you know well mary and pippin often get confused because they are so similar and then you're dealing with 13 mary and pippins so <laughs> how do you make that how do you make that stand out unfortunately that does mean pushing some characters away Elegy, hello. And Git, hello as well. Hello, everyone. That unit is awesome, man. Jaren saying that. Thanks. Thanks. I, I have a problem with his face. And he kind of looks at me like he doesn't, <laughs> yeah. like he doesn't like his face either. So <laughs> I'll probably modify it later. But <laughs> <laughs> he feels like he's he's standing there. He's a bit uncomfortable. He's yeah. <laughs> Matteo saying the cast was great, but some of the dwarves looked too silly. Uh, while Thorin and Killy looked like small humans. It's true, I think, when you're looking at someone like Gloin, who is, pr you know, arguably one of the most dwarven dwarves of yeah. the company, he looks like a dwarf, even when you're up close. When you, whereas, you know, when you're up close with Killy, he looks like a guy, uh, yeah. a human, you know. Uh, and, you know, they, they were trying to make him look like the dashing hero, you know, young, young, adventurous dwarf and all that. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you don't like dwarves because they're pretty, right? You like dwarves because yeah, they, exactly. they have a lot of characteristics and they can be very goofy and very funny. Not because I think, yeah, I think there was... Uh, I agree, I see where they were coming from. I think they could have done it a little bit better. Um, but, again, it doesn't bother me hugely. No. So, when is Eligi passing by? We are waiting to preview 
Well, <laughs> indeed. To show what we have, actually. Showcase toilet card concepts. So, I think I think the this gray is a bit too bright. My my thing. Looking good. Yeah, I think that's quite bright in terms of. Oh, you can use the fill tool, by the way. I don't know if you. Indeed. Yeah, it's much quicker. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I always forget about specific Photoshop tools. Thanks for reminding me. A lot of time saved right there. Oh, indeed, indeed. I, I used to do that as well. So I guess because right now it looks weird that it has a cape and only one one scarf around his around his body, so I'll have to make a back view and explain how the mm. hell this is happening. <laughs> Iden's saying, what about the forced love story and putting Legolas in the movie? Um, I, I, think... I, I, oh no, go ahead, sorry. Oh, uh, okay, sorry. Um, I think Legolas in the, in the movie would have been cool anyways, because he's the son of Thranduil, but mm. he indeed took up uh, much of the space, so. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the love triangle was very badly done. <laughs> God, God, that was shocking. I liked Harry as a character, actually. Yeah. I don't mind. It, it's just the love triangle thing, really. <sighs> no. Yeah, I do really like Toriel, but yeah, um, she was created created to be a strong, uh, strong female character, and then they close her in this exactly. love triangle, which is pretty sad, man. Lots I would, I think, I would have liked it if Legolas played a small part. If yeah, because realistically. He would have been there, and yeah. and if he had been a thing, if he'd been invented by the, when Tolkien wrote The Hobbit, which he wasn't, he was invented when he wrote The Lord of the Rings. If he'd been invented during The Hobbit, he would have he would have come up. He's the prince of the woodland realm. No, no way would he not have come up. Yeah. So that's completely fine by me. And and you know, creating a new elven character like Tauriel, I don't mind it either because you know the the film created new characters for other nations, you know, uh, which people don't mind. So, or change them or stuff like that. So, it's just what they did with her is what people find a problem with. Now, Elegy is joining very soon, just came home. Although you didn't have to wait for him. He says. Indeed. <laughs> but I wanted to. Xavier's saying things are good about the Hobbit trilogy, Martin Freeman, of an armor for Imladris, and Smaug. Indeed. I think to add to that, I'd say Martin Freeman and Gollum's scene, Riddles in the Dark, was excellent. I would say the casting as a whole was good. Uh, I'd say the designs for the dwarves and the elves were excellent. Dale kind of looks a big. Dale looks cool. I mean, they, they look more like Warhammer yeah. than Lord of the Rings. But, you know, I've been looking at them a lot recently because of the unit cards. Yeah. And I like them now. <laughs> they grew on uh, me, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I think their hats, their helmets, are, they're quite cool now. I, I used to think they're a bit silly, but now they look they look quite Russian. And if you think of where Dale is located on the Middle Earth map, it's kind of fits with Russia. So mm Um, Reich Pepe, nothing in The Hobbit will even come close to the utter horror we will see when the Amazon Lord of the Rings come series comes out, from casting to the script, mark my words. Uh, I don't oh. mark your words. Don't be so I, hasty, man. That is very hasty. That's a 
I'm very open to it. I think, yeah, I mean, if it's cool, I, I think that would be a massive success. Uh, and the cast, I'm quite confident the cast is going to be good because they're all theatre actors, like I was saying earlier. Yep. And John uh, which Howe. means, yeah. John Howe is working on the design, so they can't go wrong that way. Oh, he's pulled out, I think. Oh, really? Which is a shame, I, 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 as far as I know, which is slightly <laughs> worrying. Oh, well. They've lost a lot of key... <laughs> They've lost a lot of key people, like they've lost the Tolkien scholar, they've lost John Howe, which is slightly worrying. Um, but again, I'm I'm still open. I, mm. I'm not exactly. I still believe they there is a lot of potential, and mm. they're probably going to do something great. I mean, the whole show can't be bad, right? Because yeah, exactly. Like there has to be something about it that's yeah. good, you know. Even if it's design or or one battle, if one battle is good, yeah, <laughs> you know that. that. Uh, but you, I mean, if it's really bad, you might get a situation like Star Wars, where when the when the prequels came out, number one, two, and three, people hated them. But now that the the Force Awakens and all the seven, eight, nine has come out. No one's no one's thinking about how bad the prequels were. People love the prequels now. Yeah. <laughs> so we might see a situation where the Hobbit suddenly becomes, you know, elevated to god tier. <laughs> um, which at the moment to us seems ridiculous, but it would be a very funny situation. Uh, yeah, you never know. Um, Dale kind of looks like the Russ of Kiev. Yeah, exactly. Ragnarok. Good evening. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, and Martin. I always pronounce your name with a French accent because I know you're French. Uh, speaking of unit cards, first, I really love the new ones. When then do you plan on redoing the other factions' unit cards? Well, uh, Martin. I have all that remains now is Gondor and Dunland. Uh, and Gondor is up next. I'm on a little break at the moment. And Dunland won't be done until we do their redesign. Because why bother designing something? Why bother drawing something that's going to be reworked in future? But the next update will contain lots of new unit cards. And I might even redo like, the Linden ones, because they're getting quite old now. I did them quite early on. I might be forever, like Manu, our elven guy, I might be forever trapped in a cycle of reworking. <laughs> Let's not tell him that the, the Noldorin elves aren't actually in golden armor but in greenish armor <laughs> yeah. and, the, and the fact that there's little on the front of their their weaven woven armor there's little strips of string yeah on, on the uh, let's not tell him that <laughs> uh, but manu is on a break at the moment There's... On a wall, ever since they got rid of Will Poulter. Will Poulter would have made a great Elrond. He looks exactly like him. But yes, he's not in the show anymore. I, I always, I, I've always loved the actor of Elrond, too. Mm -hmm. He's great. My one worry is that they, they make the show... And it doesn't appeal to Lord of the Rings fans, but then it appeals to people like Game of Thrones fans who like that more gritty thing. Yeah. And then that sort of changes Lord of the Rings into this gritty, bloody Game of Thrones type thing. That would be unfortunate for me, yeah. I think. If they make it and it's just, just bad, then it just sort of fades away and gets forgotten. But if they make it so that, you know, everyone now thinks of Lord of the Rings as this... Game of Thrones type thing, that would be unfortunate. It would be sad because it it's really not what Lord of the Ring is about, so 
Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because there's still a whole message behind the whole story, so... And Amazon won't care. If, if they get the views, they'll keep doing it. Yep, sadly, that's the business model. Hey, hey Erzka, can you imagine if the series offers good designs to make further units from Rise of Mordor? That's the hope. I mean, yeah. you know, Arnor, maybe some Harad units. Um, Gondor, maybe. You know, if we see some cool stuff in there, Mordor, yeah. dwarves, dwarves of Khazad-dum. Because, you know, us concept artists will eventually run yeah. out of work. Well, let me just check our concept. Concept remaining spreadsheet. Oh, we're at 49 people, viewers. That's actually, oh, are we? Are we though? 47. Great. Knock, knock. Oh, hello. Hello, Andy. hello guys. Hello, how are you doing? I'm pretty great. How about you guys? I'm seeing very good results on the stream. Yes, very, yeah, very lots of fun. Okay. Oh, sorry, I kept you waiting. You could, no, uh, no, you know, it's, it's <laughs> all right. I was it's insisting time. on waiting for you, so it's all right. <laughs> While so, you okay. are showing things, I'll add up how many concepts we have left to do. Okay. So, uh, guys, I'm going to start showing the concepts I did for Lorian. Lothorian. Uh, it's logical to start with concepts, you know, because, well, that's where it starts. I hope they can see my screen right now. I hope they do. Okay. Wait. Is it working? Is it all? We can only see the Photoshop. Yeah. Unless you're able to drag the images I, I down. think it's the delay. Yeah, exactly. It's coming in. Okay. So, basically, what you see here was my first shot at the Twilight Guard. <laughs> no, we can't see it. You can see it? No. No. <laughs> I see it on the live though. That's weird. Oh, maybe oh, yeah. I'll... Yeah, it's Discord that isn't uh, working. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's Great. working on YouTube. So don't worry. It's working on YouTube. Great. So uh, this, yeah, this was my first shot at the Twilight Guard, which is uh, an elite ranged unit for the Florian, and I was going with a kind of practical warrior monk. Uh, ideal <laughs> so they have like those half cloaks and uh, they fold their cloaks to not hinder them in battle which yes okay that's a really cool helmet design i love it thanks and this is ex exclusive right because you haven't published it yes i Although, haven't uh, i haven't published it indeed what how what have we learned from pixelated apollo's videos that we should change about this one when you preview it um, yeah, <laughs> change the logo. <laughs> but yeah. the thing is, this is not... Um, this Yeah, this is not the decisive um, concept. I actually totally changed up the whole concept. So next we got the Heroes of Ammon Lank. Well, my first shot at the Heroes of Ammon Lank. Not sure if Manu's gonna change them because he quite liked how they looked uh, when he when he modeled them, which they are basically a simpler, uh, a yeah, a silver version of the Golden Boys of Tier Three. But it's always good to have a concept. So mm. yes, here I, is. I mean, uh, to be honest, I like the I like the fact that you, you you're using like a. Because Manu's current uh, heroes of Am Amon Lank are quite beautiful in terms of the, the shading. They look more like the Twilight Guard, in my opinion. Yeah. Because they're using these sort of light purples and blues. So I wouldn't mind that look going to the Twilight Guard. And yeah. then uh, maybe like a golden version of of your um You can actually Twilight show it with the previews that uh, I've sent you. Yes, indeed. but I will do that uh, afterwards. So, okay. Um, yeah, just like a comparison. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Here is the decisive, uh, decisive heroes. Uh, uh, no, those are the decisive Twilight card I made. Um, it's quite pixelated. I don't know why, but well, 
here you can see they wear full clothes so it's a way simpler version of the concept than before wait I'm having trouble with my photoshop okay so it's a quite simple take on them but I prefer this one to the other one they also have a a unique version of the glove that uh, I made for Lorian because the tier 3 uh, the basic infantry for tier 3 have this like short version so I made a longer version because they are basically all cloaked and yeah, that's awesome yeah so and I, I love the fact that you kept the idea of the cloak being uh, you know kept inside uh, the belt yes. Yes, it's actually very cool looking, so <laughs> I had to go with it. Um, and here we have the tier 2. I, re I Ma Mera did, um, a t took a first shot at the tier 2 and he said I could rework it. I didn't Indeed. rework yeah. a lot though, <laughs> as you can long see. long time ago. They are basically the same guys, they just have a different shape on the tunic. Um, and the Nimrod L patrollers are my um, addition to the to the lot. So they are mounted archers and swordsmen. Naif infantry, I added also like pouches and all that stuff. So to make it yeah, I think it makes sense. These guys are the sort of guys that patrol around the borders. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so you know that that makes sense that they have traveling gear on them, like little bags. And yes, indeed. They have to keep some lambas. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. And last but not least, the tier one and very well known uh, Sentinels of Lothlorien and also Outriders. Well, basically, the whole tier one is in there. Um, I was thinking about making more variation because it's going to be a pain for the Outriders to have long cloaks like that. <laughs> so I was thinking of doing some modifications but right now that's where the tier one is at and i'm quite happy with it uh, yeah they're looking great that yeah, was, indeed. Uh, i think uh manny might have to get rid of their cloaks if you're i mean because cavalry cloaks tend to look quite yeah. wacky or he could yeah. um, um model them like i did for the twilight guard you know like oh uh, yeah yeah that's a good idea them. they would actually sort of tied up behind their back yeah exactly that's a great idea okay okay so here we go here we have the Heroes of Ammon Lang that Manu modeled, which I do have to give him. Looks pre look pretty cool. And when you see the capes, the detail that, that's on them, they look really, really cool. Um, their male is purple also. And that is the shield that you can see on the uh, Games Workshops miniatures, actually. So you can see... Um, Oh yeah, Meron and Elysia, I just realized why you can't see the, the pictures. It's because I'm sharing my Photoshop and not my screen. <laughs> yeah, ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so. we're pretty behind because we are watching the, the stream on YouTube. Yeah, wait, I'm, sort of, I'm hearing all the, the epic descriptions and waiting and waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll change that. Wait, um, I'll stop streaming. And then... Wait, uh, I'll just... Actually, there was quite a debate around the, the hoods because, you know, the, they were looking quite wacky and then he, he made them very differently and they look really great now. Yes. They look so good. good. Over the, yeah, over the helmet. I think the shield could have, like, a little more... Those those little lines seem... The big lines seem quite fat and chunky. Yeah. I think you could make that more intricate a little, yeah. in a way. Um, but that... I think it has to do with gloss. Actually, and uh, ah. I think he changed that in the end. Ah, oh, nice. I have no idea, though. And here we have them in action, <laughs> throwing and throwing an urukai over them. Poor guy, he's having a bad day. Isn't he? <laughs> if you think you've had a bad day, folks, look at this poor guy. <laughs> a small party of scouts that were sent ahead to yeah. patrol and see what was happening in Lothlorien. Yeah. And yeah, they were sent to get information, and the heroes of Ammon Lang thought it would be a cool, a cool party, party. Or, yeah, you know, yeah, or brainwashed Urukai. They didn't know. They didn't <laughs> know that the they've been told that the elves are the bad guys. Yeah, 
and they get they get confronted by this. Well, yeah, the, Galadriel basically overkilling it. Like, uh, yeah, let's not send a tier one. Let's send a tier <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The movies are boring. Why? Why follow the movies? Follow the crazy Rise of Mordor law. Yeah, I like that. Um, it feels like, yeah, you know, you have like those one-year-old Urukais, and then you, <laughs> you have yeah. those. I don't know how many thousand-year-old killing machines. <laughs> And they have a great history because these are the guys that uh, fled from Dol Guldur. So it's, you know, ah, yeah. it was called uh, Amon Lank before, and then uh, it was called Dol Guldur. Oh, uh, so are these guys, are these guys then not a reward for capturing Dol Guldur, but they actually have been there the whole time? They've been hiding alive since the, yeah. the sacking of Dol Guldur. Yeah, I believe, like, I, I read the description today, and it was like, that they were, uh, okay, wait for it, let me check. Oh, that's, that's even cooler, actually. Yeah. Yeah, veteran warriors who held the fortress against the onslaught of the shadow long ago. So, yeah, these are the, actually the, the veterans of the, of the Battle of uh, Dark Do. Very cool. Yeah. So this actually means that uh, I think that Amon Lang was under Orofer, so Tranduil's father. Yeah. So these guys are actually... Uh, oh yeah, they should be for the Woodland Realm. <laughs> yeah. They are but they actually fled to Lothlorien because of course it was closer, you know. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah, true. Okay, that that's actually a very cool backstory. Yeah, it is. Elite warriors who had to flee because, well, yeah. <laughs> At one point, too many orcs is too many orcs, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I didn't That's get to see. Keep up with the chat. Yes, I did. <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> read the chat. Um, it was a debate around, I guess gender of the characters which we don't really enjoy because it can lead to unfortunate circumstances yes yeah uh, uh, race of the character uh, skin color yeah uh, what was and uh, lucky storm actually joined the stream lucky storm is actually one of the newest guys on our discord and he's like sending this Huge papers of suggestions, which we really enjoy. So here we are. And he's asking, are you guys, uh, do you have something new in mind for Isengard? Do we? <laughs> no. I think that oh, Isengard, Wags is the yeah. only thing new. And, and actually, new unit cards. Yeah, the, the rubble, actually. Like, well, wasn't there like some kind of ideas to, I don't know. Maybe there, there will be a rework of the the goblin tears. Or the oh armor. yeah, maybe. Yeah. But I think Isengard looks pretty, pretty. Yeah, simple. the Uruk uh, look perfect. Yeah. The and the Dunland, the Dunland units, of course, will also get a yeah, rework exactly. when oh, Dunland yeah. is reworked. And if you're talking about the actual settlement itself, mm -hmm. well, we won't say anything, will we? We won't. But there is actually a preview. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, yeah. So we will say something. Check out our previous channel to see what Isengard is going to look like. Yeah, the actual art tank tower. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an interesting map. It's not going to be your usual siege battle. No. Yeah. Yeah, because um, when you think of art tank, you think it would be pretty attacker sided, but. We'll find ways to make it interesting. Yeah, exactly. We don't want it to just become a, f a field battle inside. Yeah, indeed. Inside the settlement, so we want it to be. And Victimize has recently got bridges working, which is a massive step. Yeah. Which means we could do sort of orc pits with rickety wooden bridges and all that crazy nonsense. Yeah. So, Okay, let's you do the back. More here. Bridges. Yeah. 
gonna start to do the back view because I think there is a way to make it look quite interesting. There is a possibility to add like um, a lot of utility material. I've actually missed our little chats on the stream. Yeah, I've missed it. It's good to be back. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. And it's good to yeah, it's good to be back with all you guys as well on the chat. Let's see. We're still gonna keep the numbers of the stream low, but you know, they're still coming. So Indeed. You know, in the following days and weeks you will see some activity here. Yeah, indeed. Two a week, I think we're thinking. Yeah, something like that. Nothing major, of course. Like there isn't nothing. There isn't any. No, any... unfortunately, we haven't got any updates for you mm. in the few, next few weeks. But we're going to keep things as interesting as possible. All right. So, command T. <laughs> Because I do, I do not have the shortcut. And flip. Here we go. And it does look quite good, so I'll just leave it at that. It looks okay. Um, so, what is this? Yeah, indeed. Looks good. Now I need this. Um, so, let's sketch the armor. So, we have this cloak wrapping it would make sense to just this is what actually is great about your guys designs because this is tier one and it should look pretty bland you know pretty weak in a way like in terms of uh, how beautiful it is and then again you you made up these wonderful designs which <laughs> make the, the tier one actually interesting thanks man i appreciate it it's actually very fun so you get to rework the whole ideals people have about tiers. Yeah. Exactly. Tier ones are some of my favorite concepts, actually. Yeah, me too. As we were saying earlier, how you can make them look beautiful and they're quick to do. You know, you don't have to worry about huge amounts of detail, but you can still make them look very beautiful. Yeah, I, I had a a blast designing those on Anduin Vale uh, mm. spearmen and archers because well it's a low tier unit it's tier 2 so, but they, they're they still fairly simple and in their way they're compli in their own way they're you know complicated which makes them actually great yeah yeah exactly One of my favorite units from the last update, from the 0 0.4, uh, is actually the, um, I can't remember the, the sword company. No, th this is the sword company actually yeah. for the dwarves. Uh, uh, dwarven, the dwarven warriors, is it? Yeah, dwarven warriors, the, the one with the sword. It's actually mm. pretty interesting. I really like it. Yeah, but, indeed. Like it shows that you don't need really flashy stuff to make a uh, design interesting. Yeah. That actually was one of your first concepts, Edward. Yes, I indeed. I actually designed the whole <laughs> the whole uh, lower tier roster for the dwarves, mm -hmm. except for the uh, few units Mayron did um uh, the high Oh yeah, I did the the Matic warriors. Yeah. That yeah, was the yeah. only one I did actually, I think. And then you did those beautiful high the high tier unit. Oh, they were good fun. Yeah. Very fun. See, so I had this idea of actually that's a cool thing. Wait. So we're gonna make a strap here. Like he's carrying something, uh, and you'll have the belt buckle, and then here you have place for a pouch. Wrong layer. 
Oh yeah, the classic. The classic. My Each time I try and think, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give layers a try. <laughs> I always end up, I always end up spending, you know, ten minutes on it and think, oh, I've just spent ten minutes drawing on the wrong layer. <laughs> uh, and that that always <laughs> makes me think, okay, we'll we'll try again next time. Question: I have it. This actually doesn't make sense to carry something like that. Maybe it's better on the front with yeah. a bandolier like that. Yeah, indeed, that's a good idea. Well, thanks, Elijah. No. It makes me think of the uh, bandolier and pouches mod for Skyrim, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you'll have your ultra cool bandolier. Utility pouch over here. Lambas pouch. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what do you carry for food? Bread. <laughs> Very simple people. Um, Reich Pepe saying, uh, Reich Pepe saying, generally more a fan of the normal dude standard units myself with a simple beauty. Yes, I agree. Me too. There's a cool thing to the simple guy fighting for something. Yeah, beautiful. indeed. So I decided to include the l very famous Lorian leaf as the brooch that is holding the cape in place like that. So you have the you have the scarf coming around and the scarf is actually tailored into being a cape behind them. The question is do they fall idly or not? <laughs> mm. Now that is the question. Yeah. That is something you guys are going to have to find out on the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> First person to send a screenshot of a Ford on Laurel and Leaf gets access to uh, the campaign. Yeah. <laughs> Balrog included. <laughs> yeah. As yeah, an exactly. agent, of course. Yeah, as an agent. <laughs> yeah, we can release, like, after we release the campaign, we can make, like, a Naples full. Oh, yeah. We just uh, we added the barrel rug and it's just an agent. That would be the the possibly the worst <laughs> yeah. output of e output of energy to make all those animations for a barrel rug. <laughs> Indeed, just an agent. No, oh. Matteo Oros saying, um, "I miss these streams." Well, yeah, we all did. It's actually great fun. Great to be back. Yeah, indeed. And Alter's here. Alter? Oh, what is... Tier 1 concepts are my favourite. They are the most representative of everyday life of their cultures and really make the game world feel alive. Um, Alter is one of our newest team members and he is hard at work on the Easterlings, on the Candish and Variag units. Probably working on them right now as we're talking. Indeed. So, and he's uh, our quality control for uh, realism and practicality yes. in our designs. Absolutely. Without ever being too much, Alter finds a great balance between uh, what could be added in a fantasy world and simply practical. Indeed. Friendly guy. Yes. Um, it's always nice to work with friendly people. Paper saying, is it exactly like the Lo Lorian Rangers escorting a fellowship with Aldir after Moria? Those are the other ones, right? The Sentinels? Uh, yes, those are the Sentinels. The guy I'm doing right now is a unit we we see very briefly uh, as Haldir is talking to the fellowship in the, I would say, um, advanced wa uh, watch post. 
Is that how we extended it? edition? It's not. Yeah, in the extended edition, you can see. Oh uh, yeah. But they're in the. It's like a watch post for the Lorian guards, and you you get a quick quick look at these guys. But since you only see like a small part of how they look, I mean, you only see the leather leather part. You have to make up the rest. But it's the same, you know, same group of of people, you know, same group of designs. Yes. Now, folks, I'm going to have to leave. I'm going to have to go and make dinner, I'm afraid. Uh, well, um, thanks for coming, stopping by. Indeed. If you're still going in two hours' time, then I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you have to be, happy, you know, fruity levels of uh, yeah. commitment. I have to start very soon, too, though. Uh, yeah, we all have to go eat. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yes, that's like it's looking really good, man. And Thank it was you. great to see all those elven concepts. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And indeed, right. Um, Chat, I'll see you soon. Hopefully, I'll do a stream soon. Yeah. Then. I'll see you. Farewell. Man. See you. So. Um, HK saying, I love the unit making streams. I uh, actually always kind of get lost while watching them. I, because I don't really understand what's happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but Mary. I mean, stream. sometimes they're really good. Yeah. Like, when I see Marvel's designer, like the one for the clock, yeah, it's indeed. really great. Yeah. Like, uh, when I saw Frosty make the, the Nazgul, mm -hmm. it was really great. Yeah, I was um, watching um, Mega Blue Iron um, doing the Uruk, uh, I think it was Chainmail, and he did this in Marvelous Designer 2, and it, it was very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is. And Lucky Storm, uh, you guys know when we can see a new faction overview? Just asking. Okay, uh, I can actually say that the next faction overview is in production. I sent it to the... Um, the youtuber we tasked it with uh the other day and it's being worked on and uh you know usually we, we want to keep them coming every month but i actually like of course it depends on the on the video maker so yes you know, it's the same as uh, with updates and previews you actually have to wait until the artist is done with them but it is in production and it's looking really great. Like the, uh, I just read the script and it's looking great. I won't say the the faction, but uh, it's great. I don't even know the faction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I, I posted it in uh, normal public, like private with the yeah. channels. Uh, just something private. Um. HK asking when will the next stream be? Well, I guess it's gonna be uh, Leo, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Like actually, he streams on the maybe even Mega. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, maybe it will be Leo because he solved all of his problems with the computer, and uh, now it's actually a very overpowered computer. So. Oh, <laughs> well, right. Yeah. yeah, he won't have any problems, but I actually don't know because. You know, we stopped for a while because uh, we actually wanted to build up your hunger <laughs> about these streams and everything. So it's looking kind of great, like, you know, 50 viewers. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds and, good. Uh, yeah, it is. And uh, yeah, of course, like, we don't know, but uh, we are going to keep it at two, three maximum streams every week. And we will see. So, is Frosty almost done with a rad? Uh, we can say. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but it's gonna be like even if it's <clears throat> kind of no, he isn't. He hasn't finished actually. He has a lot of stuff to finish up, and uh, of course, after that, he's moving to the tier one for Mordor uh, with the Mega Blue Iron. And, um, you know, we, we want to make the, the next updates feel more uh, thematic 
So you're going to have uh, maybe only evil factions with uh, unable focus. You won't just have units that are thrown in uh, randomly. So, you know, we're going to need some more time, like at least two months to, for the next update, something like that. But don't take my words for granted because I don't want you guys, you know, uh, <laughs> knocking at my door because it, it, we didn't believe it. <laughs> Guys, if you want to keep asking questions, we're here. You're watching Hadrid's beautiful work. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, we can answer your questions. Yes. Um... And this is usually when you start actually asking about the campaign. Yeah. This is the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Mirgwood elf asking, will Mordor have the Witch King like Dwarves and Dane? Oh. Yeah, yes. of course. It's a custom general that we need to make, and uh, you know it, it. It isn't in the work. Um, we are, we actually have Kamol in the works, and the normal Nazguls, as you've seen uh, um, in Frosty streams, and yeah, we will see. Like, of course, you will see a preview. Uh, as soon as we finish it, because it's actually really great if when we finish it, when when someone starts working on it, actually. Yeah. Okay. Very simple patch. Yeah. It's looking great. Thanks. You were focusing on the back, and then I sent you to the front. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it's for the better, so... Yeah. The back is still looking really great. Thanks. I, I would have many issues, like, remembering uh, how something goes on the back after you've thrown it on the front. Yeah. It's just so the 3D modeler knows what to do, because if you just yeah, send exactly. him, like, the front of the art, he's going to be like, Okay, cool, <laughs> but I have to guess the rest. Yeah. There are some units where you don't have to do the back view because they, for example, only will wear a simple tunic or chainmail. So, uh, but if you do complicated things and tailored stuff like capes and and utility, for example, if you want to add like bags and you'll have to eventually do a back view. I'm so excited for the raw and unit roster. Yeah, it's looking really great as a roster. <laughs> Nothing more at the moment, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, yeah. Like we, well, I mean, all the roster look really well. Like, yeah. you know, when I watch them, I just read some stuff. And yeah. they're looking really great. Yeah. As a team, sometimes we look at the Rohan roster. And we're like, well, one day it's going to be done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One day. You can fantasize about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, the other great, like, uh, I don't know, I'm really excited to see uh, designs for Imladris, even if it is low priority. Yeah, but I'll probably because start the, soon, though. Very yeah, soon. It, yeah, it's so you, you're going to start on it. So it's Yeah, very soon, because, I mean... If Arnor is going to start being worked on, and Arnor is also very low, pri low priority, yeah, as Marion mentioned. Um, but I guess I can do one or two M ladders concepts here and there. Yeah, here and there. Oh, the best! Like I want to see the Lord Masters, <laughs> and I want to see the yeah, and the, the Talcas. Oh, oh um, they changed the name. Did did they? Yeah, I might still change the name, I guess. I'm on the private one, so let me check the public. Okay. What was it, like Champions of Talcas, something like that? Yeah, I'm excited to do the um, Glorf, in the, uh, Glorf in the Lords of the Golden Flower. Camarine. Yeah, those are really going to be... And the Aragorn Grey Company. 
Yeah. I think Inladris does have a very cool looking roster. Yeah, exactly, because they have this kind of uh, link with the. Um, I don't know with with, with the Valar and yeah. you know the the Noldors and all of the Noldorin actually yeah. and all of their history. So it's you know it's uh, a design from an ancient past. So it's I don't know. I'm very excited about that, even if it is low priority. <laughs> yeah, a house of a hundred elves mustering an army of three thousand, as we said. Yeah, of course. We are in total war. We need to. <laughs> 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 Tom is actually watching us while eating, I guess. <laughs> I hope you're cooking right, Maren. Yes, <laughs> as an Englishman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For as much as they can, you know. <laughs> well, you can talk as an Italian indeed, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, we Northern people, we're trying, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, Lucky Storm, after we conquer Rohan with Mordor, but Gondor defeat us in Rohan, then Rohan as a faction comes back, or Gondor will have Rohan territory? Uh, well, it's not uh, Crusader Kings, so it's, it, it works differently. So in the end, when you conquer something, it is in your realm. But if Rohan is completely defeated, then maybe you can liberate them, as you do with other factions in the vanilla game. Yeah, maybe, make, you know, you no, that's I, I play too much Shogun too. I was I was about to say you can make them a vassal. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, it's uh, well, it's it's gonna be a puppet. I think. Oh yeah, indeed. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be a puppet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't so remember. it's oh yeah, subjugate. Yeah. I think is the thing that pops yeah. up. Yeah. And... No, subjugate is when you. Uh, it's for the last uh, uh, settlement. Oh, the last settlement. Yeah, and then if you uh, if the faction is completely destroyed, then you will just you know um, uh, you I don't know when, when it's yeah you will just you know conquer I don't know yeah. Alburg, and then uh, you will get the option to free them, and then it's gonna be a puppet, but you can actually you know remove the puppeteering there. Mm. Ah, Carrie. I love Carrie, actually. We, you know, it's really great spice to use everywhere. And Sarah Alexander, on Trello it says some faction are planned short term. How long is short term? Uh, it's, I don't know. The short term <laughs> means uh, whenever the team member has the time term. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And, uh, you know, the will to do that. Yes, so indeed. It's, you know, we can just say planned and it's the same thing. In a Tila base game, the rebels from one region restate the faction that was originally there from Ochre Saxon. Yeah. So it's in that case, the, the case that was just mentioned by Lucky Storm, it's not a rebel. Like, they're not rebelling. It's just, you know, that Gondor frees Rowan from the clutches of Solomon. Rex Pepe, uh, are you guys open to suggestions about general armor design? I have one pet peeve of mine, but of course I don't want to impose myself on you guys since I'm not part of the team. Well, uh, hell yeah, man. I mean, your yeah. biggest opportunity is on the streams. You can make loads of suggestions. Yeah. Um, I mean, right now I had like the concept clearly in mind, but for example, Mayron once had didn't really know what he could do, so he asked the, he asked the chat, and something really great came out. So, you if you have suggestions, uh, just feel free. Uh, also, feedback <laughs> if you feel an arm is too short or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know if it's related maybe to this concept or something, you can do it here, or yes. we have the suggestion channel on the, on the Discord, Indeed. and we are of course gonna take it in consideration. Yes. So yes, don't worry about really. it at all. If you do have a suggestion for armor, just post it in the suggestion channel. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, concept artists are still humans, and sometimes they do not have inspiration. And when people come in and help them create stuff, it's really actually a great combo. Yeah, and sometimes I guess you, you burn out, you know? 
Yeah, indeed. <laughs> well, <laughs> to me, it happens rarely because I just love to draw. But it it sometimes happens. It, it it's not necessarily a full on burnout, but sometimes you just get tired of working on a unit. So. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Like even I guess as an activity, like uh, it, it even happens to me sometimes, <laughs> even if I'm not uh, modeling or something. But you do like to write. Yeah, I love to write. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I was actually checking today the the character limit. I just asked about the the character limit for the in-game uh, descriptions. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can you know write something short. Yeah. That sounds cool. I can't wait. I love the descriptions you made for these guys. So, <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy doing it. You know, it's uh, sometimes you just get a pose in mind and then you start from there. Yeah. Usually, do it like that. <laughs> Lucky Storm. No, I haven't read your suggestion today. I was on a bus when I saw it, and I didn't have the chance to look through it you know, thoroughly. Awkward Saxon, I had an ugly idea about some low-level Ultorian melee units having a couple of arrows to shoot like a killer base game melee units. Have a couple of javelins to throw. Mm, yeah, it's a bit different because the javelin, you know, it's uh, in Attila is more like you know the Romans had the pila and then you yes. know, they were gonna throw it just before the the but line collapsed. Yeah, I think yeah. in Attila the some units have the skirmish ability and they actually uh if they don't have to charge i think they just like can't stand around and if the enemy gets up close they can just like let loose yeah exactly and, and it's that, that's devastating <laughs> yeah indeed. but that sounds cool um to have like low florian low, low tier units having like javi cap capability oh he meant actually with a bow so yeah, that would be a bit more complicated. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Rex Pepe, uh, so to give kind of a preamble, correct me if I'm wrong, but from my understanding, the Lotus designs are late antiquity, early Middle Ages inspired, except some later period weapons like swords or Albert. Uh Well, uh, book-wise, I think you're correct. Movie-wise... No, it's actually later, I think. Movie-wise, it's a mashup of everything, I think. Because yeah, exactly. Yeah, you even get the idea of uniform armies that appear, you know, way later in Yeah, in with Gondor. Yeah. Which is nonsense, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Medieval armies. No, I mean, I love them, of course. Like yes. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, the, the idea that... Uh, yes, medieval armies um, were never uniform. Yeah, exactly. That uniform, it's... Not gonna happen. Everyone has its cool heraldry to show off, so why yeah, would you? Yeah, exactly. Why would you bother like looking like a, the guy next to you? You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, Would be cool to have at least some trash units in every faction. I think we'll keep multiplayer alive. Uh, well, it, it depends on the faction, actually. You know. Mordor has a lot of trash and the other ones don't but in the end like these guys as long as uh, you know even if Edred uh, has made them look awesome they are tier one so they won't stand for too long always depends on how the how you use them of course but yeah indeed in a prolonged yeah. melee fight they will eventually start to crumble <laughs> So, you know, you can consider them trash, kind of. But, of course, you have to understand that we are, you know, we have a roster that is balanced for everything. And uh, our main focus, of course, like, even if today everyone only plays multiplayer, we want to get out of a campaign. So, you know, we actually yeah. have to think about that. And uh, that is our priori priority. It's not like we have we're gonna add some units just for the sake of it for multiplayer. Well, of course, some modders might do that. You know, just make a sub mod with this lower tier trash. Yeah. 
Okay, so Rex Baby is on a rant about the Hellbolt tile. <laughs> this is the one that the the Black Numenoran have uh, in their uh, the Myron's concept. Oh, um, okay. Like uh, I'm just saying that you're on a rant because many people said that. <laughs> like I monitor the the comments on YouTube and uh, you know, it came <laughs> up a few times. So it's not a like actually. I, you know, I, I speak on your comment. It's of course like it's important. So don't worry. I think Meron did a great job with the elbow tie, though. I think it is yeah, very unique. I actually and like it. Yes, me too. I think it, it fits very well to the unit. So. Yeah, and at the same time, you know, maybe you have to think about them as, you know, having this armor that has been uh, in their families for a long yeah, exactly. time because they were these nobles of Numenor and they were enriched by their... Uh, imperialist conquest and then in yes. the end you know they they got that armor and of course Numenor was um, you know they, they had high skilled uh, craftsmen even if they weren't dwarves or elves <laughs> some of these comments may have been me by Rex Pepe yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it can be you and then some other people like will publish it on other discords. And um, Lucky Storm, what do you think? Gondor is not overpowered with uh, 21 units? Uh, no, because actually those 21 units serve to um, give out that vibe of uh, a big, kind of big empire. Yes. You know, they have vassals, so they have those five or six units from vassals. And then the rest is just, you know, the usual stuff. Makes, makes loads of sense. Yeah, I think that um, Gondor should be like some kind of objective in diversity when you when we arrive to the campaign. Like if you want to have more units or something, like maybe, of course, maybe less than 21, but, you know, with uh, special events and everything, like Erebor is pretty close. I can't remember if it's more or less. But it's kind of the same idea, you know. They they're gonna rec reclaim some mansions and then they're gonna get their units. And at the same time, they have this um, I don't know different yeah uh, tiers and units. Yeah, and I like that you can um, uh, if and it, it depends on the different on the different objectives, of course, but. That if you capture a settlement or a different or, or a province, you might have the chance to get a special, a special, specific unit, a unit specific to that region. Like for example, the Orokarni, Orokarni dwarves. Yeah, those look really great. Like, <laughs> I remember your concept looking really great as well. Yeah. Spent a lot of time <laughs> on it. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, those are like. What? Yeah. You go ahead, no, no, go ahead. No. Okay. <laughs> no, I just that you know, with the early tears of the dwarves, yeah. uh, those are my favorite ones because they look really unique. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I like them too. Oh damn. Um, I like them too, but I actually my favorite concept of the dwarves that I did was the halberds. It's also the one I spent the most time on. I actually remember that because it was one of the first uh, pictures that I've uh, published on ModDB in the changelog. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Yeah, I remember publishing that and uh, the, the Sword Company or whatever it's called. I can't remember right now. Oh, yeah, indeed, the Sword Company. This was the very first, um, <laughs> the very, very first, uh, or it was the... Dwarven Warriors, I'm not sure anymore. But this was my very first Photoshop drawing. <laughs> Actually, not the change look, it's the dab log. I'm sorry. Actually, let me check. It's my very first yeah, take. So January 2021 dab log, my first dab log. And last at this moment. <laughs> so. Yeah, here they are, the halberds. They look really great. And the beard is looking on spot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, allow me to doubt. <laughs> it 
It's actually my first, yeah, my very first Photoshop drawing. And now that I look at it, it looks absolutely awful. <laughs> <laughs> to your high, to your high. <laughs> Not to ours. It still looks amazing. Uh, Tsar Alexander, how big are the Momakil, Momakil planned to be, or is it not planned yet? Well, they are planned in the sense that they are going to be next after the works. So after the trolls, we're going to do the works, and then we're going to do the Momakils, and they're going to be pretty big, you know, movie version. Yeah, as the Momakil should be. Yeah, exactly. Charge them head on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, uh, how many pieces of lambas does he keep in his breast pouch? <laughs> <laughs> well, you just need a, a bite to fill yeah. the, the stomach of a grown so, man. I guess. So you don't need that much. Yeah. I guess he has enough for a week. <laughs> yeah. It's not Mary and Pippin here. Yeah, indeed. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll add an elven rope for the outdoorsy look. A what? Um, oh, a an rope, elven. yes. An elven rope. Uh, now They uh, look pretty busy. Like, uh, it's a great idea, but they will look pretty busy. Yes, indeed. Well. And on the back, I don't have any space to attach that because, well, you have yeah, the cape. Yeah, because it's a cloak. Yeah. You have the cloak, so... Um, but that's actually a good idea. Maybe it's uh, as, a, as a variant. Yes, I was planning to do uh, more variants. So the back view is going to be the one and only back view. And I'll mm -hmm. probably do different cloak types. Very probably. And I think the cloak still looks way too bright over here. So follow Merwin's tip and actually use um, the bucket tool. Yeah, you can actually make it, I don't know, like you draw it on the side uh, whenever you, you finish the concept. Yes. And the album rope, and uh, maybe, you know, whoever is going to make these, man or, or someone else. Mm -hmm. You know, as a variant on yes. the side, maybe, you know. What? Yeah, attached to his belt, like, I, I think that it will look too much Indiana Jonesy. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But, uh, yeah, of course, it makes sense. For it to be on the on the belt. I'm sad my samurai inspired Kneef didn't come across as I wanted. Well I have time to modify that later. Mm, Lucky Storm at Rise of Mordor. Sor Sauron will have the same height like in the movie. I mean, the humans look small to him. I don't know about that. Do you know something about that, Elegy? Well, uh, Sauron isn't being worked on, but uh, I guess he will be taller than other people around him. He's going to be towering. <laughs> Looking up to those filthy little... Little humans, puny humans. Yeah, I mean, in the movie, in the opening scene of the Fellowship of the Ring, he smashed like fifteen guys in one hit. So, yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty impressive. Massey Ferguson, the elf maiden on the left, looks gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, I think I'm going to call it a day because I am hungry and I have still school tomorrow, you know. Well, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thanks for a the pretty great ride. Thanks for all the very nice comments. We appreciate it. And uh, thanks for the support. Uh, your support is yeah. helping us keep up with the work and the demand. Even though we take our time. <laughs> yeah, we do. 
and of course join the discord and we have a suggestion channel if you want to keep sending us you know suggestions or if you want to leave a feedback there is another channel which is called feedback of course yes indeed. and yeah we'll see you guys on the next stream yeah, thanks guys see ya bye guys <laughs>